Today, I want to talk to you about a very interesting problem from Math Olympiads. In fact, this problem has also come in ISI and CMI entrances in some form or another. It's called the Hermite identity. But let me tell you first about the big picture. In mathematics, there are certain functions called periodic functions. Examples are, of course, fx is equal to sine of x, fx is equal to cosine of x. As far as non trigonometric functions are concerned, fx is equal to fractional part of x is an example of a periodic function. What is fractional part of x? Well, suppose x is 1.29 then the fractional part of x is simply 0 0.29. Basically, you would want to write x as an integer plus a fraction. Fraction means a decimal number between 0 and 1. So it could be equal to 0, the fractional part could be equal to 0, or it could be less than some number less than 1. So it has to be a positive quantity. I'll give you a question. You can answer this in the chat. If x is equals to negative 2.3, what is integer part of x and what is fractional part of x? Sometimes we write as integer part of x as the floor function of x and the fractional part of x as curly bracket x like this. Okay. So, you can easily check that fx is equal to fractional part of x is a periodic function. A periodic function means the output of the function repeats after a certain period. In the, in the case of fractional part of x, the period is 1. That means f of 1.2 and f of 2.2 when the function is fractional part of x is both the same. So this is all about periodic functions. Periodic functions are extremely important in mathematics and tricky problems can be solved using periodic functions. Now let's come to the Hermite identity. So I'll tell you what the identity is all about. Hermite identity. It says that let x be a number, a real number, then integer part of x plus integer part of x plus 1 over n plus integer part of x plus 2 over n up to integer part of x plus n minus 1 over n is equal to integer part of nx. This is the content of the Hermite identity. And you can check this. Uh, let's say if x is 2.3 and n is suppose 4, then you can check up integer part of 2.3 plus 2.3 plus 1 over 4 plus 2.3 plus 2 over 4 plus 2.3 plus 3 over 4 and we stop there is equal to integer part of 4 times 2.3. 4 times 2.3 is 9.2. Right? So the right hand side is of course 9. The integer part of 9.2 is 9. The left hand side, what do we have? We have this is 2, this is 2, this is also 2. You can check. This is also 2. And this one turns out to be 3. So if you can, if you add all of them, you get exactly 9. 
that's what the Hermite identity says. It says for any x and any integer n, positive integer n, this particular equality holds. So how do we go about proving this? So let's try that. And we will use two strategies. The first one is known as the difference function. The difference function in this case, if we want to show that two things are equal, we often take their difference, those two quantities, difference of those two quantities, and then we treat that as a function, the difference as a function, and analyze how that function behaves. Sometimes we use calculus, we differentiate it and show something is wrong or something is very flat. I have discussed this in other videos as well. In this case, the difference function f of x will be simply x plus x plus 1 over n up to x plus n minus 1 over n minus whatever we want to show it to be equal to. So that is the integer part of this. Okay. So we just took the difference of these two quantities. That's the difference function. Okay, the first claim is that for any value of x between 0 and 1 over n, so notice that there is a less than equal to sign here and there is a less than sign here. So, in between that interval, f of x is equal to 0. Now, you can easily check that. Why is that true? Because if x is equal to 1 over n, then 1 over n plus n minus 1 over n, this becomes 1, right? An integer part of 1 is 1. But if x is less than 1 over n, smaller than 1 over n, each of these sums, the integer part of it will be 0. If this one will be 0, this one will be 0, this one will be 0, all of them will be 0. So the sum will be 0. And here, since x is less than 1 over n, therefore it will be n times 1 over n minus some theta, let's say some number. So you can easily see that this is a fraction less than 1. If you multiply n by something, 1 over something larger than n, that is something less than 1 over n, then that product will be less than 1. I hope I'm making sense. You can also think a little bit about it. If you divide, if you multiply a number by something less than the reciprocal of the number, the product is always less than 1. Okay, so this is also 0. So, f of x is equal to 0 in this particular interval. The second thing we will show is that claim 2, this one, that f is periodic. Why is that? Because f of x will be equal to f of x plus 1 over n. So, the period of this function is 1 over n. We can easily check that. Let's see how. So what we will do is we'll just take the function f of x, take the function f of x, and replace every x by 1 over x plus 1 over n. So let me just paste it here. And I, what I'm going to do is I'll just replace every x by x plus 1 over n. Actually, I'll make two copies of it. I'll just come, I'll be able to compare these two things. Let's remove these little pieces. And I'm just replacing x by x plus 1 over n. x plus 1 over n. And this one becomes 
x plus 1 over n plus this. And this one also becomes n times x plus 1 over n. Okay. All right. So what do we have here? We have f of x plus 1 over n is same as, I just write it carefully. So I'll write this term here because I want to compare the two terms, this one and this one. I will be comparing them. So I'll just write this one here and this one here. So this will be just x plus 2 over n and so on. Dot dot dot. Okay, so here this one comes to x plus 1 integral part of that and minus nx plus 1. So if there is an integer like the integer 1 inside the integer part formula, then you can take it out. Try to tell me why can we do that in the comment in the description. You can take this plus 1 out from here, take this plus 1 out from here. So what do we have? We have f of x is equal to x plus 1 over n dot 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 a bunch of things x plus n minus 1 over n plus this one. So integer part of x plus 1 minus this one integer part of nx minus 1. So plus 1 minus 1 cancels. So you see what we have here is exactly same as what we have here. Right? Awesome. So that means f of x plus 1, x plus 1 by n, f of x plus 1 by n is exactly the same as f of x. So we have shown that this is a periodic function. Now, a periodic function which is identically 0 in one period will be 0 for all values of x because you will just take the next period and you will say, okay, the values of the function here are the same as the values of the function here. But the values of the function in this period is identically equal to 0. fx is equal to 0 in, the, in this particular period. fx is equal to 0. So in every period that follows, fx is also equal to 0. If a periodic function is 0 in a particular period, then it will be 0 identically in all periods. So the function will be equal to 0, which means fx is equal to 0, implying that the, this little portion here is equal to this. This idea is also useful for other problems in Mathematical Olympiads and ISI and CMI entrances. Tell me if you have seen other problems like this in some of the contests that you have taken. Also check the link in the description for more resources like this. Keep on doing great mathematics. I'll see you in the next one.